Welcome to episode 19 of Michael McCoy's Garden, the 1st of June, 1998. Though it's only the first day of winter, the garden has long since died. It's a total mess, with black leaves hanging around like rotting rags on bruised stems. There are no redeeming qualities at all. There is simply none of the charm of hoar-frosted, straw-coloured stems that you see in pictures of English gardens in winter. I expect, I expect this is because, one, these photos show gardens where all the really offensive bits have been carefully removed, leaving only the grasses and other lovely textural things amongst the evergreen foliage. Most of my evergreen foliage is covered in a coarse network of slime left by very, very dead nasturtiums. Two, the photos are taken on the occasional dry day in an, all, in an English winter when the straw colours emerge. The rest of the time they probably look as pitiful and waterlogged as mine do. Three, the gardens are generally finished, free of the power line trenches and consequent piles of black mud and yellow clay that are everywhere and spreading in mine. Perhaps all it will require will be a tidy up, like the one that made such an, an enormous difference in late summer, restoring the garden's fresh, freshness. It is at this time of year, and only at this time of year, that I see any virtue in tidiness for its own sake. My own preference for the rest of the year is of a degree of romantic wantonness and neglect, and I'm always surprised when the beauties of such a garden are not obvious to everyone. Family members who have seen an, an herbaceous planting of mine just shooting through bare soil with neat little green buns of new foliage have commented that the planting is uncharacteristic of me. It's so tidy, they say, smiling with the new sensation that they can finally connect with something that I'm doing. Sixth of June, 1998. I've always loved the idea of putting the garden to bed for the winter. The thought of an annual break from gardening is appealing and one can imagine getting back to it with such a renewed vision and therefore energy in spring. The climatic price, however, is very high. I think I have a fair balance here with a very low demand for maintenance work during the winter, but just enough to still experience those unique winter feelings. There are many winter experiences that I would gladly forego, such as the frozen dirty hands which burn as you wash up, then dry out and crack later, the thick platforms of mud permanently stuck to the boots, the soaking sleeves and trouser legs caused by pushing between wet shrubs or wading through the long grass. But there are some winter things that I wouldn't be without. By the end of these short days, there's a strange awareness of your surroundings or a new framework of perception, for example, that seems to be created by, or at least accompany, thoughtless, thoughtless, animal-like labor. Time and again, I've found myself lost in some menial task, digging mechanically or raking over a shaggy sodden lawn, when suddenly I'm stopped by a strange feeling, as if there's something going on behind my back. I look around or look up and see and feel the stillness. There's an almost audible hum, as if the cool damp air is diffusing sound as it diffuses light, and a beauty emerges that is normally veiled. Though I stand still, perfectly still, and scan my senses to try to discover which of them is de detecting this insight, I cannot, and simply find myself standing, standing and grinning from ear to ear. I remember profoundly the first time I experienced this in the garden, some 15 years ago, and have had the experience many times since. These occasional windows are pure joy, though they cannot help make me suspect that there are other beauties, other perceptions that remain permanently veiled. We seem to see which, with such limited vision, our senses so satiated or overstimulated that only the richest of beauties and strongest of flavours break through. If only we could see deeper, we might be content with so much less. So join me tomorrow as I start to write about some of the things I was constructing in the garden to support 
all of this explosive planting. See you then.